Hey everyone, welcome back to Fantastic Microbes and Where to Find Them. Today we are going to be looking at honey and agave under the microscope. I've gotten a lot of requests to look at foodstuffs under the microscope and I figured this would be a great place to start uh, because sticky substances like these can tend to capture a lot of things in their environment. So we're going to start off with what I imagined to be, uh, you know, the most exciting thing, which is the raw, unfiltered honey uh, that came locally from Utah. Now, uh, I'm just putting some on a slide with a glass cover slip that I'm uh, gonna just flatten here to kind of make everything level and uh, we're gonna look at it underneath the microscope in just a second. Now most of you probably know where honey comes from. It comes from the nectar of flowers that is gathered by bees um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second but let's go ahead and take a look at this honey. So, there are plenty of things to look at here. Now, let me break some things down. First of all, what is honey and what is not honey? I didn't realize this until putting this on, but uh, this cover slip that I had was cracked in a lot of places. And so you might see some little, you know, spider-like fractures here and there. Uh, there's also a bunch of bubbles. Uh, those are just like the like perfect white circles that you see. Uh, everything else, though, is... Uh, pretty much organic debris, you know, that you'd see in honey. Most of this debris is going to consist of pollen and uh, spores from plants and from fungi, as well as some bacterial spores as well. Now, all of this pollen in honey might look, you know, dangerous or scary, uh, but there are some studies that show that if you eat local honey, uh, it could potentially help with allergens. And, uh, but there are certain bacterial spores in here that could could potentially cause botulism for infants and so uh, there's a reason why you know you don't want to give this honey to babies because it could cause paralysis or death if it has a high concentration of the botulism causing bacteria. Uh, anyway, here are some crystals that uh, I found in the unfiltered honey and I put it underneath some polarized light. Uh, here is a fungal spore. Uh, I believe it's called conidium. I'm not too familiar with fungi. I believe here were some other fungal spores, uh, but I believe that's enough for the unfiltered honey. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. So this is grade A filtered honey. And you will first notice that there is still some stuff in here. This is brand new, totally opened. Um, the area that I was working in is pretty clean. Um, and I still was able to see all of this in the filtered honey. However, even though there's still stuff in here, I want to remark that there is something special about this filtered honey. Um, it isn't just, you know, passed through a special filter, but it is also pasteurized. And this means that it is put under um, a significant amount of pressure and uh, heat at the same time, which is usually what it takes to uh, finally kill some of these spores. Um, sometimes with just heat or with just pressure, uh, spores can survive some pretty crazy circumstances, uh, but uh, this honey gets both of those things at the same time. Anyway, I found a lot of these uh, small green pollen grains and, uh, you know, some of these little spores here as well. So it kind of made me wonder, you know, are these things coming from similar places, you know, like is this coming from local Utah as well? Uh, anyway, this little hair-like thing, uh, I believe is uh, a hair that came off of the bee. Again, this is in the filtered honey, so uh, kind of crazy to find that. Um, here is another pollen that is a brownish red color, which was kind of cool. Uh, but that was about it as far as diversity. So let's go ahead and look at the agave. Now with the agave, it kind of took me a while to get my bearings, mainly because there wasn't too much stuff in here. And so I was, you know, looking at these uh, cracks in the cover slip and some air bubbles and kind of zooming around. But eventually I started seeing little strands like this. And, you know, once I started seeing one or two, eventually that turned into a dozen and then close to over two dozen of these little strands. Now, these probably aren't from plants. They probably aren't from animals. Uh, they are, um, you know, in various lengths and sizes, and, uh, you know, they have a continuous uh, look or shading to them all throughout. 
And uh, that kind of leads me to believe that what we are looking at are microplastics. Now, microplastics in agave, that is probably a little bit unsurprising to me, uh, mainly because this uh, came from some factory from somewhere, and it is in a plastic container. But I was surprised at how much I found in this single drop. Uh, but if you look at the research, you know, we do, as humans, consume a significant amount of microplastics every single year. There are a ton of articles online where you can find, uh, you know, estimates as to how much microplastics we consume every year, uh, as well as uh, some articles suggesting what these impacts may be on the human body, you know, what they do to cells and what they do, you know, as they accumulate in our intestines or in our lungs, because um, these can be found in things like bottled water or even the air we breathe. Uh, microplastics are kind of everywhere. But yeah, that'll basically do it for this episode. I hope you guys found it enlightening. Uh, I certainly learned a lot, and uh, I am kind of hungry now, so I think I'm going to go make myself a peanut butter and honey sandwich. But uh, yeah, enjoy, and let me know what other stuff you want to see under the microscope.